What's good? What's going down in Jesus' name? What's good? What's going down in Jesus' name? I want to share with you out of 1 Corinthians, I promise, 1 Corinthians, the whole chapter. Um, then we're going to deliver on that promise. Because the enemy wants us, wants us to be inconsistent in what we're doing. And, and no, we're not going to do that. So, But 1 Corinthians, and if you've been with me sometime, perhaps on a podcast. Now, where I'm doing is that it may be on a podcast. It may be on... A, I hope some of you can see me because I'm quite dark. But anyway, if, if it's not on the podcast, which is Henry Lee Ministries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that. Henry Lee Ministry. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's not on the podcast, then perhaps it may be on a YouTube channel, which is also Henry Lee. Or if you're looking for me on um, perhaps on Facebook. I don't really put things on Facebook like I used to. As far as the uh, broadcasts and the things. But um, if you're looking for me on Instagram. And it should be under the same name. Try to keep everything. You know. How it is. You know. Because. Don't want any confusion. I want you to be able to find the stuff you're looking for. Because some of you ain't looking for a good home for a minute. Because it's time. Quite hot in here. Yeah, but I have a, a certain daughter, one of my daughters, she always thinks it's hot in here, so perhaps she's right. But she ain't here. <laughs> Turn off the air conditioner. Ain't that something? Anyway, first Corinthians chapter number twelve. Start reading at verse number one. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, now spiritual gifts are what God gives to the believer that believes in Him. Everyone doesn't believe in spiritual gifts, every church doesn't believe in spiritual gifts. Some people think spiritual gifts are just for the book of Acts. You're greatly mistaken. Some people think spiritual gifts are just for those who apostles. You're greatly mistaken. Some people think spiritual gifts are just for um, people of a certain nation. You're greatly mistaken. Some people believe the spirit gifts are just for apostolic, Pentecostal, Church of God in Christ, Church of Christ in God. Uh, isn't that, is it, spiritual gifts is not a denomination. Spiritual gifts doesn't come through uh, who you know, who you affiliate with. As far as, uh, uh, well, I know this man, so uh, he, he, I, I gotta have the same gifts. No, nope. spiritual gifts comes from God Himself. Comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. He led captivity captive, and He gave gifts unto men. When God fills you, when Jesus Christ fills you. With the Holy Spirit, He gives you not just His Spirit, but He gives you gifts and certain giftings that He gives you out of the Kobasha that you can use to help the body of believers. Uh huh. Now you may not believe, and guess what? If you don't believe, it ain't for you. How about that? <laughs> Everything is by faith, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Everything is by faith. Everything rises and falls on faith. You gotta believe in faith. You get you gotta have faith to order to receive this thing. Do you receive it? Do you believe in spiritual gifts? Do you believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit? With the evidence speaking out of tongues. A lot of churches don't believe. A lot of churches are operating right now without spiritual gifts. They're operating now without this uh in, in some churches, um, they may have the uh the spirit and as far as you know, um them the, with the evidence speaking out of tongues, but they don't they don't have the spiritual gifts. Because for whatever reason, did you know that the gifts of God, the uh, the gift of God, the uh, the operation of the Spirit, has to be operated through love, has to be operated through compassion. A lot of times in the New Testament, you'll see the Bible say Jesus moved with compassion, and compassion is a word um, in Greek called sympathias. It means to have a feeling, feeling of. It means to put yourself in that person's situation. So it's like, it's like if that person was sick, then you consider yourself being sick. If that person got, you consider yourself got leprosy or got cancer or got a blind or anything that happened, then you, you operate according to that compassion. You don't want to see yourself sick, right? You don't want to see yourself blind, right? You want to see yourself in a situation, right? So you move with that type of compassion and saying that we in this together, you move with that type of compassion. Spiritual gifts can't be operated trying to, um, spiritual gifts will not be operated or uh, done to show off 
they will not be done in, in order to make someone else great, make you great. The spirit, of, uh, the, spirit the, the gifts of the spirit are operated through love, they operated through wanting to see, give, give, giving God the glory. Spiritual gifts are operated through the spirit, they're operated by God. The Bible says this. That's what John the Baptist testified and said this. I baptize you with water. That's what he said. But there's coming one that after me, that is really preferred before me, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So it is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He's the one to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's the one that gives you the gifts. Now, uh, man baptized with water. I baptized a couple people in my day. Did a couple weddings in my day. Officiated a couple weddings in my day. But it wasn't me. It was the Holy Ghost. But even though I was there, yet the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to perform and bless them and keep them in Jesus' name. So, he says, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ignorant means to ignore. Ignorant can mean to ignore. Ignorant, ignorant just doesn't mean you don't know something. See, being ignorant means you, don't, you, you ignore something. <laughs> Did you know that? He says, I will not have you ignorant. And there's a lot of churches right now who are ignorant of the spirit uh, of the gifts of the spirit, because and a lot of pastors are ignorant of the gifts of the spirit because they don't want to. They they want to ignore it. They they, they don't. Believe. So where he says, you know that you Gentiles were carried away onto these dumb idols, even as yet you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the spirit of God, called of Jesus, accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. See, the only way that you can know that Jesus is Lord, you got to have the Holy Spirit. If you see somebody right now confessing, like myself, that Jesus Christ is Lord, the only way I'm doing that is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has revealed it unto me who Jesus is. Some people just know him as Son. Some people may know him as Savior. Some people may know him as, uh, uh, you know, as um, a Mary's baby. Some people may know him as uh, Joseph's son. Some people may know him as a carpenter. But those of you who have the Holy Spirit, you recognize and realize that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is God and God all by himself. And I'm just going to leave that be. Now, Wesley, let's, give you, let's go deeper. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Now, he's saying there's diversities, diversities of gifts. He's saying there are various kinds of gifts. There are various kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. Watch this now. And there are the differences of administration, but the same Lord. Uh, churches, different churches, operate different. Different churches have different ministries. Some people have, you know, where they are uh, missions and, 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 and different things. And, and, and some people serve. And, 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 and so and you, 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 you may even be a parking attendant. If you're a, a parking attendant, park the cars by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now there are diversities of operations. Uh, here we go. See, there are diversities of operations, but the, it is the same God, which work of all in all. So the, the, don't get excited when you see Baptists and Catholic and Methodists. Don't get excited when you see Pentecostals and Apostolics and, and, and Church of God in Christ. Don't get excited when you see full gospel and Baptists. And What's the problem? There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God, which work of all in all. Now let's go deeper. But the manifestation of the Spirit, my God, the manifestation of the Spirit, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. My God, the, 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 watch this, let me go deeper. But one is, is given by the Spirit of the Word of Wisdom. Now, he, and, and this is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and around verse number 8, he's getting ready to tell you different types of gifts. I don't believe all the gifts are listed here. I know what, people want to put a number on the gifts, but I don't. We want to put a number on it as far as, you know, but here's, here's what I'm saying as you read the Bible because you, you understand what I'm talking about. But Paul right here is getting ready to tell you about different giftings of the Spirit. And the first gift he talks about, he mentions here in the first Corinthians 12, and then he says, For one is given a spirit of the word of wisdom. That is a gift of the Spirit, a word of wisdom. Now, word of wisdom is something that is, is God. Speaking to the future, 
Mm -hmm. and, and it may be something that's that's future that's getting ready to come up and, and God gives you a word of wisdom and he, he may give you a word of wisdom you may be a young man he gives you a word of wisdom hey you're going to preach one day you're going to pass one day so here's what you do here's what you do or you may start a business one day so here's how you handle that or you may be married one day here's how you handle this uh, you may be the CEO one day he, uh, or wisdom now when, when Joseph was standing before Pharaoh and Joseph told interpret Pharaoh's dream for him and Joseph told Pharaoh, well, Pharaoh, there's going to be a famine in the land. And this famine is going to be severe. And it's going to last seven years. And so here's what you need to do. You need to appoint you out a man that's um, um, wise. You got to have somebody that's going to store up and, and, and stock up and save and do different things to prepare for this famine. Thus is a word of wisdom given to some of the future that's getting ready to happen. So you may have a word of wisdom. Word of wisdom can work in business. I pray right now, Lord, give me the word of wisdom. Shabo do koba. I need the word of wisdom. Rabba, that not just for myself, but for you, for my family. Oba do kola ba. For rabba shit. I pray for the word of wisdom. I pray for you. And over your life. Now watch what else he says here. He says, and to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Now the word of knowledge is something word, the word of knowledge is something that's happening right now in an individual. Word of wisdom is for the future. But word of knowledge is for something that's happening right now. For instance, you can come into church and be struggling in your marriage. And you can step into church, and, and I'm not just talking about a church you go to. I'm like, see, you step in a church that you don't normally go to, and that pastor or that man or that woman ain't got to be a pastor. Now, it could be anybody in the congregation that has the word of knowledge. The, the, the gifts of the Spirit are not for just for the pastors and the preachers and the prophets and the teachers. The devil's alive for everybody, everyone that believes. And, to, and God gives us the gifts of the Spirit to whoever He will. Now, you can step in somebody's church. Say you step in somebody's church. Say you step in somewhere and um, those people don't know you. They don't know you from Adam. They may know your face. They may know, but no, nope, they ain't on your Facebook page. They ain't on your Twitter page. They ain't on your Instagram page. They ain't on your secret dating site. Whatever you got going on. <laughs> but that person, right, you step in this church. Say you're going through something in your marriage, and also you got a sickness. Let's just say it's a, you got a tumor. And you're going through something in your marriage. And just to sprinkle something else in, you're going through something on your job. And here's how the world knowledge works. The person doesn't even know you. But all of a sudden they begin to say to you, um, you got a sickness in your body. And I'm praying right now that you're healed in Jesus' name. And also, that situation on your job, God is going to work that out. That marriage is going to fix, be fixed also. Be, be blessed in Jesus' name. And they walk off from you. And you're like, oh my God. Who, who is this person? Who be, has this person been reading my email? Has they been, do they have my phone? Is my phone on me? Is my phone on lock? Do they have me, uh, do, they have that? do they have my house book or something? They, they don't, they, nope. That is a word of knowledge. That came from God. The only way they can know that is it came from God. The word of knowledge is for something that's going on with you right then and right now. The word of wisdom is for something in the future. But the word of knowledge is for something that's going on right then and right now. You can step into the church and be going through. I remember I stepped into, um, I'm not going to say his name, I'm going to say his name anyway. His initials is Prophet Thornton. I stepped in Prophet Thornton's church. And, and, and for the last three days, all right, I was, my stomach was killing me. And I actually had baptized one of my daughters that week. And my stomach was killing me. You tell me, I'm telling you, it was, my stomach was hurting so bad because I do have a con, uh, something going on in my, in, in my stomach. Not, not, and, and, um, and, and definitely at the time. And no one, hardly no one knows this. You know what I mean? If you're close to me, you may know it. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you, you don't know what, what, what ailment I do have in my stomach, in my, 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 what's going on with me, as far as, it, but if you're close to me, you know exactly what it's called and everything. And I was going through real bad, and I should have went, to, I, I, I almost went to the hospital, I almost went to the ER, but I don't like going because usually when I go to, uh, to the ER, they may keep you for about three or four days, and I, I ain't trying to be in there like that. So... And thank God I'm healed now in Jesus' name. This has happened about uh, probably last year, last summer, perhaps. And um, but today, September second, 
thank God for my healing. And I declare it right now in Jesus' name. And I thank God for it. But I was going through this was like last year. So when I stepped in church, in this church, right? And um, people speaking in tongues, people going, worshiping God, you know. And right before Prophet Gordon began to minister, he said, someone in here is going through a real severe pain in your belly, but God is healing you now. Now, how can you know that? Shadow <laughs> Koba. It's all because of the word of knowledge. Um, I had a cousin that has a business. A cousin uh, has a business. Him and his wife had visited the same church, Prophet Thorne Church, and we, we went down there and, and, um, so it was prayer time, right? So you know, they called people for prayer. And my cousin went up there, Prophet uh, Thornton, um, Bishop Thornton, uh, uh, began to speak to my cousin. He said, do you have, a, a, don't you got a business or something? <laughs> now he thought, perhaps I might have said anything. I said, oh, I haven't told him anything about you. <laughs> it's just a word of knowledge. Hobo do a cool by. That's what the word of knowledge is. It, it'll tell you what something is going on right now. What was going on with my stomach was something that was going on right then and there. And God healed me that day. I, I don't recall. My stomach has not been hurting like that since last year when he, he told me that God's going to heal. And that's exactly what has happened. <laughs> so... That's what the word of knowledge is. If it's something that's going on in your life right now. The word of wisdom is something going on in the future. Now, if you don't believe me, and that's cool. It's because you perhaps you not have, have not been around a place where the gifts of the Spirit are allowed to operate. See, some churches don't even allow the gifts of the Spirit to operate. They're on a time limit. They ain't got time for all that. But you can't put God on the time limit when you're looking for the, the Spirit of God to move. <laughs> You're like, well, God, show up on 1150 because 1150, the choir is going to stop singing. The praise team is going to sit down. And I need you to show up and get the gifts of the Spirit in about uh, another 10 minutes. Nope. He don't, he don't operate on your demands. So usually the churches that have the gifts of God and the gifts of the Spirit being manifested and used are the ones that don't put God on a time limit. I'm just going to leave them alone in Jesus' name. Now let's go. So he said the word of wisdom, future. Um, the word of knowledge is present. Another, and I see he said, now this is uh, verse number nine. He says, to another faith by the same spirit. So the same spirit that's given out the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge gives the gift of faith. Now, what is the gift of faith? Because now everyone has saving faith. Saving faith is John 3, 6, 8, I came and preached you the gospel. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He died for the sins of the whole world on the cross. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose again from the grave. And if you can't believe that, you can't be saved. And that is right on cue. That is right on time. Matter of fact, go me to Romans chapter 10 because somebody don't believe me. So Romans 10 because I need to preach to you the gospel. Now, the gospel right now, I'm not preaching the gospel. I'm just giving you a word. But the gospel, make no mistake about it. The gospel is a death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that? You better recognize and realize before you get rolled on. Let me give you something. Romans 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo. Boy, when you start getting to this word, you're like, mm-hmm. Ooh. I know some of you into food, right? You're looking at whatever your favorite food is. You in the ribs, and chicken, and all that. You know, I'm looking like you looking at me, you're like, mm hmm. Yeah, I went to the uh, restaurant and you just didn't want to order. You're so good. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh my God, I can't order all this, but this is the menu, baby, and everything is good. So, you're, so I'm like, mm hmm. But Romans 10, around verse one, says this: Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is. That they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, had not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. 
Can't you know that you can go about right now trying to establish your own righteousness? That's why you got so many religious folks walking around church talking about don't drink, don't smoke, don't curse. Uh, I'm better than you. I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't play the lottery. I don't do nothing. Okay. Good. And that's their righteousness. They went about to establish their own righteousness. Well, I, okay, that's good. What you say about you? So, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness so to everyone that believeth. See, everyone that believeth, then I prophesy to you, you have Jehovah to signal abiding on the inside of you. And Jehovah to signal is the Lord our righteousness. Now watch this. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which do of these things shall live by them. That means that you can't do nothing wrong all the days of your life if you fall in the law, if you try to establish your own righteousness. But I do nothing wrong. But the righteousness which is of faith, speak it on this while, say not in thy heart who shall ascend unto heaven, but that is to bring Christ from down from above, but who shall descend into the deep, and that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what say of it, the word is not thee, even in thy mouth of thy, thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. See, we preach the word of faith. That's what I'm preaching, the word of faith. And the word of faith is straight up the gospel. And here it is. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. That, that is it. That is it. That's all you need to be saved. According to the Bible, and I know preachers and teachers and folks out here coming up with all different things that how you're supposed to be saved and, excuse me, I guess, stay saved. So I guess what they're trying to say is, get saved by Jesus, but stay saved by Moses. The devil is a lie. only one gospel, and that is it. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. you got to believe on that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that's how you get saved. you got to confess it, and that's how you can save. Now, what else we can see here? For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesses made unto salvation. Here we are. For the scripture says, whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. Listen, whoever believes in Jesus will not be put to shame. Listen, you're not going to believe in Jesus and end up in hell. I don't care what the teacher told you. I don't care what the bishop told you. I don't, to, I don't care what the, the church member or the choir member or the first lady or the deacon or the doctor or whoever it is told you. According to the Bible, whoever believes on Jesus will not be ashamed. You don't believe in Jesus and end up in hell. That ain't the deal. The deal is do you believe on Jesus? Then you shall not be ashamed. That is the gospel. I don't want else to give it to you. That is the gospel. Now, and I just wanted to show you this. Also, verse 13 says this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, is going to hell. No, shall be saved. Anyway, go, go back to me in 1 Corinthians 12. So, I just wanted to show you that this is not saving faith, though. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, and around verse number 9, it says, To another faith by the same Spirit. Faith is a gift of the Spirit. But here, he's not talking about saving faith. Meaning that he's not talking about the faith we have to believe on Jesus for salvation. But he's talking about faith is the miraculous ability to believe God in circumstances that others cannot. That's how men that were blind in the Bible got saved. They got saved by that faith. <laughs> I was thinking about something earlier that freaked me. I was off in Lake Orion downtown and it freaked me. I mean, it hit me. <laughs> that whatsoever men say is impossible... It's actually possible with God. And this is the type of faith that I'm talking about. You see, um, that woman with the issue of blood in the Bible that was bleeding for 12 years, men were telling her that, no, you cannot be healed. It's impossible. You've been bleeding for 12 years. But when she had the faith to believe all I have to do is touch the hem, touch the clothes of Jesus Christ, she was healed by that faith that she has. Jesus told her, your faith has made you whole. That's what kind of faith he's talking about. You have that kind of faith on the inside. Do you have the spirit of faith? Do you have the gift of faith? And, and see, whatever man is telling you is impossible, just know it's possible with God. See, the bank told you that's impossible, especially with your credit, with your savings and all that. You got to know how you can do it. Just know that it's possible with God. 
somebody's telling you this, and it's you, you, no, you can't go to college. You can't, you can't graduate college. You can't, you, you can't start a business. You can't, you, you can't have a good, a good marriage. You get homely. You, you was raised funny. You was, you look funny. You, you talk funny. You, you can't do. Anything. Just know it's possible with God. People who have done miraculous things were once told by somebody else that what they're trying to do is impossible. Check out their books. So hold on, Bashi. Rabba do kola basihi na kola basihi. Rabba dehi na mo so rabba shihi rabba ha. Rado kola basara basuhora ba. Hold up, I feel this in my spirit also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got some issues, but I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I didn't say I was uh, perfect, but I got some. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I ain't say I always did everything right. I ain't say I always did everything I'm supposed to do. I ain't saying I, I did. I'm, I ain't saying I'm in a good spot right now. I'm not saying go by the call that bull shukora. I don't have. Things going on sometimes. I'm not saying I have desires going on sometimes. I'm not saying I often look back sometimes. Oh my God. But I am saying that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a power of God. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a power of God. Unto salvation. To all that believe. To the G first and also the Greek. So saving faith is different than the, the, what they saw about here. The, 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 the faith that was displayed. In the book of Mark, chapter 2, let me take you there. Let me show you there. It's, 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 it's no sense to even tell you what. Keep your finger on 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and go with me. Let me show you some examples of the faith that he's talking about in 1 Corinthians, the, 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 uh, the, the gift of faith. Go with me to Mark chapter 2. See, if you don't have this type of faith, when the lawyer tells you that he can do for you, then you'll give and go home. When the judge sentence you then you just give up in your mind when when they say that it, it is impossible when you accept the first answer then you, you don't have that type of faith that we're talking about whatever man is saying in that is impossible just know it is possible if somebody's telling you right now if you sometimes your pastor may not have that type of faith your deacon, your lawyer, your 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 do call out by your pin pal your your your, your date your, your your ex whoever it is they may not even have that type of faith. And so they're telling you that, yeah, you might as well just go ahead and give you might as well just go ahead and throw in the towel on this one. It's all over. But all right, no, 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 I still believe that God is able to do it. I, I, it. Can you imagine Jesus showing up at Lazarus' grave four days after the fact? And when he shows up, he's looking around, nobody got no faith. Because when Jesus showed up, he's like, well, it, it, some things, it, I don't care if he has been dead for four days. Jesus is here now. And if he chooses to resurrect, then he just got to be resurrected. So let me show you something. So let me show you this faith in Mark chapter 2. Around verse 1, it says this. And again, he entered into Capernaum. And after some days, it was noticed that he was in the house. And when Jesus was in the house, that means that folks begin. Jesus didn't have a Facebook. He didn't have a Twitter. He didn't have a YouTube. He, he, you know, he, he didn't have a promoter. He didn't have a hype man. He, he didn't have any flyers, and he didn't have to sell any chicken dinners. Uh, 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 he didn't have the word network. He didn't have TVN or ESPN or CNN or all this foolishness they got going on. He didn't have none of that. He, all, uh, the people just heard about him. They was just word of mouth. So it was noise that he was in the house. Now watch this. And straightway, many were gathered together in such a month that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about to the door. And he preached the word unto them. Listen, it was a crowd that gathered. And Jesus didn't sign no autographs. Jesus didn't get no selfies with nobody. Selfies with nobody. nobody kind of like, nope. Jesus, when he seen the crowd, he preached the word unto them. My God. And watch this. And somebody been looking for a crowd, but they won't preach the word. They preaching opinions, but they won't preach the word. They're preaching politics, but they won't preach the word. It, 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 uh, I, I, I'm going to get up. I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to somebody in a minute, but let me hold the phone to get what I'm doing. Watch this now. Now, Jesus is beginning to preach the word. Watch this verse 3. Mark chapter 2. And they come to him, bringing one sick of the palsy. That means one that was paralyzed. Which was born of four. So four men got together with this other man that was over sick that was paralyzed. He on the bed paralyzed. So four guys decided, well, we're going to bring him to Jesus. And when they could not come down to him for the press, that means they couldn't even get in. When they showed up to the house, they couldn't even get in. Because there were so many people. So here's what they did. They gave up and went back home. It was impossible now for them to get into the house. 
because there were so many people in the house and so many people outside to hear the word, they couldn't get in. That was, it was impossible. But whatever's impossible with man is possible with God. So here's what they did. And when they saw, watch this, watch this. And when they could not come now for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. They made a way. Boy, if you will make a way, then God will make a way. I found that out too. So they uncovered the roof where he was. They, they tore up the roof. They said, if we can't go through the door, then we'll tear up the roof. The problem with us is, is that if the traditional way isn't working, <laughs> the problem with us is this. When the traditional way isn't working, the, the traditional way to enter the house is go straight to the door. But when the traditional way is not working, you got to come untraditional and you got to climb up the top of the roof and, and then you got to climb on top of the sides of the building, open up the roof and then go down that way. The problem with the church is that they keep looking the traditional way. And that's why they can't and won't see miracles because they keep talking about miracles and they keep talking about the move of the spirit, but you won't never see it because they won't get out of the traditional way. It's good. No, let me go. Let, let me stop that. I don't want nobody to get offended. It's good to collect money. It's good to have a whole lot of money. It's good to have a whole lot of nice things. It's, it's good to have, in, in the church. It's good to have a nice building. It's good to have, you know what I'm saying? Where is the spirit? Where is the move of the spirit? Because there's a lot of people right now doing things because they can do it and not because they've been called to do it. There's a lot of people who look, they, they look anointed. See, uh, they was talking about, uh, I was at a service about a couple months ago, and they were talking about how people look like they got some money. And and, and, and I agree, it's, it's some people who look like they got some money. But also, it's some people who look like they're anointed. I'm, I'm, I'm praying that the power of God that existed in Acts getting us to where if somebody falls out in the church, our first thought is not, where's the medical assistant? Our first thought would not be, where's the ambulance? And our first thought would not be, our first thought is, where is, is Peter available? Because we had somebody fall out in this bad boy, but I tell you what, where's Paul at? And then if the anointing, if that doesn't work, then that's okay, but then that's my second call. Then, hey, we got to come. <laughs> our first call is to be to God. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just... So the traditional way isn't working. I I, I like I like it's, it's, it's people that um perhaps perhaps they don't smoke on, on me and say some things. I don't care no more. I'm almost fifty years old. I don't care no more about. See, when you're younger, you may care a lot more about what people say. But when you get old, you find out you don't care no more. They, whatever, man. It's, it is what it is. I, I ain't here to be liked. I'm here to fulfill one calling. I'm only fulfill one thing. Traditionally, tradition. I, I have pastors. I have had churches. I have had preaching churches. Traditionally, yes. But this is this the way I'm doing it now. It's may, maybe to sit, it's maybe it's unconditional. It, it, it's untraditional. I had to adjust myself. Like I said, I'm old. My legs getting tired. I gotta back up a little bit. Um. So what I, what we're doing now isn't the front door. And because it's not the front door, people say, "Well, something wrong with it." That's why you've got preachers preaching against reals or preachers preaching against people who are talking about why they yet doing it. Uh, don't, don't listen to nobody who come on Facebook. Don't listen to nobody who come on reels. Don't listen. Oh, okay. Well, the front door wasn't open, so that person that you're talking must have entered through the back door. The front door wasn't open, so that person must have climbed on top of the roof. He climbed on top of the sides to get somebody to Jesus. Now, let me show you something. You just take that for what you want to take it for. Take it for what you want to take it for. The traditional way. But anyway, and when they could not come down to the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, <laughs> they let down the bed where the sick of a palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, Jesus, when Jesus saw their faith, watch this. He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. 
One of the things that can get you, now of course, um, the blood of Jesus causes us to have forgiveness of sin. The blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. His resurrection causes us to not be in sin. It frees us from sin. We believe in Jesus. We, we we're free from the servant, being a servant of sin. But one of the things that get you, one of the greatest things that get you free from sin is faith. Let me give you something that's, that's going to be controversial. The absence of sin in your life is not what is wrong with you. It's what's wrong with you is you don't have the faith that knows you got forgiveness of sin. And I'm going to leave that right there. And, and and so that's what he's talking about. That's that's what the gift of faith is. That not they, they 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 didn't take him to the hospital, and I don't, I'm not saying I don't take nobody to the hospital. They didn't take him to uh, somewhere traditional. They said, well, we have the faith. We believe this this is impossible with man. This man been paralyzed all this time. We believe that in Jesus' name that he can be healed right now. So they took him to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now it's pretty a testimony of people being healed because of their faith. And sometimes your faith is working with doctors. Your faith will work with the doctor. It don't mean don't go to the doctor. It don't mean don't go to the the, uh, the people who are um, the psychiatrists and different things. I'm not saying that. Sometimes your faith is working with, with with the professionals. But don't but don't but don't think for one second, one minute, if you are a child of God, that your first call should be to your best friend. Now your first call should be to the Lord. That's our first call. See, see when we get bad news. Here's our first reaction to be to that bad news. The devil is a lie. That's our first reaction. What's your first reaction to bad news? Don't, don't let your first reaction to bad news be, woe is me. Oh, why me? No, let your first reaction be is the devil is a lie. God gonna reverse this also. And that is the spirit of faith. That is a gift of faith. Now let me go on. And to another of the gifts, he says, he has gifts of healing by the same spirit. Gifts of healing. Gifts of healing. Gifts of healing. Let me show you the gift of healing being in operation. Let me show you what I mean by the gift of healing. We spoke on the the issue above. We just talked about the man in Mark 2 um, being paralyzed. And that's because of their faith. And just some faith. Let me show you the gift of healing. Because the gifts of healing comes in where, once again, it's totally impossible with man. There's no way in the world it should be happening, but it happened. In the Acts chapter 2. Let me show you a gift of healing real quick. Because somebody don't even believe me. Oh, y'all wrong for that. How am not going to believe me? Hey, the boat, sure. Acts chapter 2. Hmm. My God here. Acts chapter 2. No, excuse me. Acts chapter 3. We're on verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Lord, give us a prayer. Lord, give us an hour of prayer. Give us an hour of prayer. Give us, give us a, a time and a day where we just pray to you. Even let's consistently do it. And Bible says, Now, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. Listen, this man could not walk never before in his life. He came out his mother's womb not able to walk. Some of us right now came out our mother's womb with some issues. I'll just put it that way. Somebody right now had came out of their mother's womb with some issues. And I pray right now that everyone that came out of their mother's womb with some issues to be healed, delivered, and set free. In Jesus' name. But that's all right. Let's keep going. So this man, he, now he's never has walked before in his life. He never has ran the basis. He never has ridden a bike. He never has done anything. He's never walked. He hasn't been taking care of all his life. Somebody every day dropped this man off. Watch this now. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask all of them that enter into the temple. Now this man every day has to, is begging at this every day. Every day he's laying from his mother's womb. Now watch this. Now this is something that's totally impossible with man. This man has been messed up his whole life from his mother's womb. But let me show you something. The most so about that now, bullshit. There's a little something, something for you. Um, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asking alms? They they beg for some money. 
he asked, hey, he seen Peter and John coming in. Hey, hey, could you spare something? Could you spare some change or something? I'm paralyzed. I'm lame. I, I've been this way my whole life. Could you do something for me? Watch what happened, though. But the problem is he ran to the right man. Peter was a beast. Peter had the gifts of healing in him. Peter got the gift of healing in him. And watch this. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. I like how Peter said that. He didn't say, look at me. No, it ain't about me. But Peter said, look on us. <laughs> and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. No, you got the wrong man. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't you didn't run into Bill Gates out here. Mm-mm. <laughs> nope, this this ain't Bezos. You just asked for some money. No, I ain't. I'm good with all that. No, I'm, I'm not. You know. Nope. Who, who's the richest cat out there? No, this this this, this ain't Jay Z. I'm you're talking to. I don't. This ain't Jordan. I'm, I'm not. I don't. Billions and billions. And who 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 else the rest of billionaires? You know. This, nope. Nope. This ain't Steve Jobs. This ain't nope. You you, you ran to somebody else. You just ran into somebody else. I don't... Uh-uh. Peter fastened his eyes on him, John, looking on us, and he gave heel to them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Seven gold have I none. That don't mean that Peter was broke. They didn't mean to have me. But Jesus taught them when they go, don't, don't take nothing with them. Because sometimes, if you do have the gift of healing, you're more likely probably to give somebody some money instead of giving them the spirit. But let me show you something. And then Peter said, Seven gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee. What you got, Peter? Because somebody, because the preachers of the day telling us that we don't have money, we don't have nothing. What you got, Peter? Because the preachers of the day in 2023 would tell you if you ain't got planes, trains, and automobiles, if you ain't got a billion dollar book deal, if you ain't got this going on, you ain't got that going on, if you don't have gold chains hanging down your neck, if you ain't preaching the gospel with a $10,000 tennis shoes on, if you ain't got if you ain't got none of that, Peter, if you ain't got 50, 50,000 members in your church and the ceilings and all that gold plated and all that good stuff, you, you, what you got, Peter? Because if you ain't got all that, you what you got? <laughs> Peter said, well, silver and gold. Uh, by none. And that's good. I have no doubt. Especially if you need some money right about now. Bad boy. Anybody want to send something to me? God bless you and keep you. I'll be looking for you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Um, <laughs> Peter says, Seven, go have I none. But such as I, get, I have, give I thee. In the name, what you got, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I got a healing, baby. I got an anointing on my life. I've been through some trenches. I've been through some things. I got an anointing. God has called me to preach the gospel. God has called me to minister. God has called me to pray for you. I got something for you, baby. Listen, silver and gold have I none, but I do have something for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Here's a man that never walked before in his life. Came out of his mother's womb. So gifts of healing. That's it. That's one of the examples. Anyway, that's it. Now go back to me to 1 Corinthians 12. This is this is a gift now. I'm giving by the Spirit. When the last time you've been in church and seen the gifts of healing? When the last time you've been in church and seen a real word of wisdom and a real word of knowledge? Not somebody saying that was a word of knowledge, but you ain't got to say it. Once, once you, you'll know it's a word of knowledge when, you, when you're involved in it. You'll know the word of wisdom when you're involved in it. So when the last time had you been in church and seen, let's go back over the review. When's the last time you've been in church and seen the manifestation of the spirit? When's the last time you've been in church and seen the word of wisdom, a word of knowledge? When is the last time you've been in church and seen a word of faith? I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, the gift of faith. When is the last time you've seen the gifts of healing? Into another working of miracles. He said the working of miracles. A miracles has involved with the, the manifestation of, 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 of the multiplication of the fish. Or the uh, water being changed to wine. Miracles often involve you to do something. Miracles often involve you. All right, well, grab that oil in the corner. And I want you to keep pouring it out. And watch it not, 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 not run out. Shabo to koba. A miracle. Working of miracles. To another prophecy. And, 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 and prophecy, it's just not involved 
And prophecy is highly prophecy. The word of prophecy is highly uh, related to the word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Or prophecy is really related, related also to the word of wisdom. But prophecy also speaks of, of, of foretelling of the word of the Lord. You'll, you, you'll notice, see, there are people who preach. And there are people that when you listen to them, you say, no, nah, this person has been anointed to preach. Once again, there are people who preach. And there are some people who you listen to and say, man, no, no, this man, this woman right here, been anointed to preach. And I'll just leave it right, I'll just leave it right there. To another discerning of spirits. Not the spirit of discernment. See, a lot of church folks get this one wrong. See, people right now, oh, oh this is my spirit of discernment, girl, I discern. That you was last night, girl. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, mm -mm. I don't trust you. Mm -mm. No, there ain't no spirit of discernment. You go somewhere and sit down. But the discerning of the spirits, there is no spirit of discernment. The Bible says the discerning of the spirits. That means that somebody may be struggling with a spirit of lust. Somebody may be struggling with an unclean spirit. Somebody may be struggling with a dakola ba, dakola ba, a greed spirit, a covetous spirit. And you're able to tell those spirits out and call those spirits out exactly by name, exactly who they are. Come on here, come out of him, thou unclean spirit. Come out of him, you foul spirit. You able to call that thing out. Not no spirit of, spirit of discernment. No, ain't no spirit of discernment. Nope. That's why you got folks running around church. Come on, ooh, girl, I, I discern in my spirit in you. Oh my God, you gonna have to doggone clean up your bedroom, I tell you what. No, no, you go somewhere and sit down. Mm-mm. Shabbat. Do koba, see it, so the discerning of spirits, now watch this, to another, diverse kinds of tongues. That means different, some people, they speak in tongues, and some people speak in diverse, different types and kinds of tongues. Glory to God. Now what else we got here? And to another, the interpretation of tongues. That means that some people can actually interpret, interpret it, what you're saying when you speak in tongues. What else we got here? But all these worketh that one in the self-same spirit, dividing to every man and serve it as he will. That means the spirit of God gives to every man these gifts, as he will, as he wants to. And he chooses by which gifts he's going to get. All right. Uh, how much time do I got? Ooh, what's that? For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, as we all are baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, have been all made to drink into one spirit. There's only one spirit now. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. For the body is not one member, but me. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is therefore not of the body? That's crazy. My foot right now is a part of my body. <laughs> Just because you see a man that perhaps you seen has more glory or more honor than this man over here, the devil is alive. We're all a part of the self-same body. That's why it shouldn't be those superstars in the church. The only superstar should be Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go deeper. And if it, the ear shall say, because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body, is there? Is he therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole body were hearing, where were the smell? But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it pleased him. Watch this. If they were, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Uh, nor again to the head, to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body, which are seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And not uncommonly parts have more abundant commonness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. And that should be, be no schism, no division. He does it that there's no schism, no division in the body. Do call that body. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. So one person in the church suffering, suffering, he supposed to all suffer with it. You think that's going on right now? Uh, you, or do you think everybody just, is my family, my situation, my this, my that, my, my and, and forget everybody else. There shouldn't be nobody in the church struggling right now financially. If you have a genuine need. You got a genuine need. You struggling. That's nowhere in the world the pastor should be worth billions. And you going to the church, you giving and struggling. You shouldn't be struggling. Mm-mm. 
you know, there's, there's, I, 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 there's no way in the world that should be going on. If you're a member, and if you're faithful and, and they give it entirely, there's no way in the world. I'm just gonna, that, that's just correct. Now, if you are the body of Christ and members in particular, and God has set some in the church, first apostles. God set some apostles in the church. Now, watch this now. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, working of miracles, then gifts of healing. Look, some people have helps. I mean, people, some people, you know, they, they help from time to time. Some people just have the gift of helps. They just want to help all the time. My mother got that gift. Ooh, shit. Boy, if my mama belongs to your church, you got a, 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 a helpful, will stay there to sun up, sun down, joking. You can call any time. I mean, she, she dead. And you better not mess over. I don't care what you're talking about. In Jesus' name, amen. And also we have gifts of miracles, the gifts of healings, helps, governments. Some people rule and govern in the church. Diversities of tongues are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all works of miracles. Have all the gifts of healing. Do not all speak with tongues. Do all interpret it. But covet it. He mean covet. That's, that's uh, one of the times you see in the Bible was telling you to covet something. It's okay to covet some things, I said, I see. Wow. He says the covet, earnestly the best gifts. Yet yeah, show sure, I, 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 he said the yet yeah, show sure, I unto you a more excellent way. That was First Corinthians chapter twelve. Listen, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Everybody on the side of my voice have spiritual gifts. I pray that you will begin to attend a church that's manifesting the gifts of, of the Spirit. And also, I pray that you yourself will discover your gift, and your gift will be developed. And you begin and you begin to get deployed. And for I can be healed. You can be healed. Your neighbor, your wife, even your enemy can be healed. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name.